In this video, we're going to be installing Octoprint on a Proxmox server. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Real Surrish Tech, and today we're going to be having a look at installing Octoprint on a Proxmox VM and setting it up with my Ender 3 V2. So, let's get going. Right, so the first thing we need to do is head over to the Ubuntu website and download the Ubuntu server. You can choose any server if you like. Um, we're going for the manual server installation, and we just want to download the latest LTS version. Um, if you want to use a different Linux server, then feel free. I'm just going for this because I can and it's easy. Once that's downloaded, we need to head into our Proxmox environment. And in here, we are going to need to go to our local disk, and then we go into ISO images. And then what you're going to want to do is upload the ISO that you just downloaded. And once you've uploaded that, it will appear here in your list. You can see this one that I did yesterday. Right, and then we can create a new virtual machine. Our virtual machine is going to be on our Proxmox node. We give it a number, a name, start at boot, so you might want to check advanced if you haven't already. Start at boot. The OS, we're going to be using the ISO image from your Ubuntu live server that you got earlier. Uh, system change your BIOS to UEFI and change the storage. Hard drive, allocate some size here. You definitely don't need more than 32 gig. Arguably, you could get away with considerably less. So whatever space you've got. CPU, I'm going to give it two cores. And RAM, I'm going to give it one gig uh, with a minimum of half a gig. Network, using the same network device, and confirm it. And then we can start after created. So that is going to create this virtual machine, and then it's going to start it up. Once it's started, we're going to need to go through the setup. And this process will take a bit of time, uh, just while it's installing the whole shenanigans and doing its thing. So once it's done its thing, we need to select our language. We need to select our keyboard layout. Um, it'll create its own network or it will check the network and that'll all be fine. Uh, you probably don't want a proxy address. You probably don't care about the mirror address. You can leave that as default. Um, you are going to want to use the entire disk because that's the kind of disk that you gave it. And then you press go. Yes, you're going to be distracted, but there's nothing on that part of the disk anyway. You then need to enter your name. a username and a password. I would recommend installing SSH because then you can actually log into it remotely. And you probably don't need any of these packages. So we click done and it should now just do its thing for a little while. Right, so once it's finished installing, it won't give you a nice message on here that looks obvious. It says install complete and it gives you the option to reboot now at the bottom. So if you're not paying attention, you probably will miss that happening. So we reboot it, we let it do its thing. It's throwing a hissy fit because I've got a th CD ROM. Might need to press enter. And then it should come back online. And once it's online, we can log in with our username and password. 
And we are then going to head over to the Octoprint website because it's time to install that. If we go to the download tab, scroll down, and we can see there is a manual installation process for Linux. And that's what we're going to use. And we're just going to follow this guide here. So the first thing we need to do is head into Proxmox, logged in, and type Python 3 dash dash version. And that's just to check that we've got Python 3 installed. Um, it needs to be 3.6 or newer, which I'm almost certain it will be nonetheless. Uh, then we go CD squiggle. Read a sudo at update. And we do sudo apt upgrade. Just to bring ourselves up to date. Okay, and once that's updated, we need to install a selection of things. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to copy and paste. So we do sudo apt install python3 pip. Python 3 dev, Python 3 setup tools. And we install all of them and let it do its thing again. There's a lot of letting it do its thing. I do apologize. Right from here, we can make a directory called octoprint. And we can go into octoprint. We then python3 dash um, then, then. So that's going into a virtual environment within this virtual machine on this Proxmox server. Source then bin activate, and we're now inside the virtual machine, virtual environment on the virtual machine on the Proxmox server. And then we can upgrade pip, which shouldn't take long. And then we can install octoprint, finally. And then what we need to do is allow octoprint to access our USB ports, our serial ports, so it can actually communicate with the 3D printer. So we go sudo user mod dash a, can't spell dash g tty and then it says pi but obviously you're going to replace that with your username and then we want to dial out from there we could then start our server but before we do that what we're going to do is make octoprint start on boot so we want wget and then we want to copy this github link and then what we need to do is sudo move that service that we've just downloaded to slash etc oh dear slash system system octoprint dot service and then we can go less etc sys and we can see that there is an exec start line and what you're going to want to do actually 
is x out of that, and we're going to want to edit that. So we're just going to sudo nano it. And that's because obviously it uses the username pi. And the username isn't pi, the username is will, which means the directory is also will. And then what we can do is sudo systemctl enable octoprint if we stop it here because then we need to go into our hardware so while that's halting we need to make sure our 3d printer is turned on and we need to plug in the usb cable into the front of the 3d printer or wherever usb port is and into your proxmox server and then we're going to go into hardware and add a usb device select the device and we can see this USB serial device. This is the new one that's just popped up when I turn my 3D printer on. So that's definitely the one I want. We add that, that comes in. And then, right, so once your server has shut down or your VM has shut down, we can start it back up again. We can head into the console and check that it starts okay. Now, if you want to use a webcam with this, a USB webcam, then obviously you're going to have to plug that in and port that USB port through into the VM as well. Okay, we can then log in. And in theory, we should automatically, or Octoprint server should have automatically started. And we have our IP address. So we can then go 192.168.0.230 and we go to port 5000 and then we get a setup wizard and we can set up so next we're not restoring from a backup access control going to want a username and password uh, online connectivity check so that just every so often it will check that it's connected to the internet so that it doesn't it just assume that it's connected if you've got a server that you keep offline but then obviously connect the internet when you want downloads or updates um, so it just means it'll it'll ping and check every 15 minutes to see if there is internet so it doesn't try updating when there isn't uh, uses tracking if you want oh you can either enable or disable plug in blacklist that's just a good way to filter out crap that's out there um, just so you don't break everything print a profile so you can go through this and change your settings build volume for example and everything else you should be able to leave the same server commands you can ignore for now webcam you can again ignore unless you've got one and then we can finish and we are in octoprint so if we click connect here it'll find it it'll load the files in the sd card it'll show you your bed temperature and it's ready to go And if we really want to, we could move it around. Which you might be able to see is happening very slowly in the background there. So that was part one of this video where we've looked at installing Octoprint on a Proxmox server running Ubuntu server. In part two, we're going to have a look at the Octoprint interface. We're going to have a look at how to use it. We'll look at some plugins that you might want to get, and then we will look at integrating it into Home Assistant. So there we go, Octoprint up and running and controlling my 3D printer. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.